Thank you so much, Miss Teresa and Miss Nikki. What beautiful songs that you have sang here on this Mother's Day. I, I think about the song that Miss Teresa sang, talking about how a mother teaches us so much. A mother taught her, you know, what it was like to have faith. A mother taught her what it was like to sing. And so what a blessing that goes right along uh, with our sermon here this morning. Now this morning in honor of Mother's Day, I want to spend just a little bit of time talking about a mother's influence. Just a little bit of time talking about a mother's influence. Turn in your Bibles, if you would, to 2 Timothy. The book of 2 Timothy. We're going to be in chapter 1. We've got one verse for you. Verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 1. And we're going to be looking at verse 5. And you can make a side note of, of Acts 16 1 as well. We'll turn over there in just a moment. But 2 Timothy chapter 1. In verse 5, there again, we're all in our cars. I won't ask you to stand, but the Lord knows your heart. Let's go to the Word of God here and read this morning, and then we'll pray. The Word of God in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5 states this, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith or sincere faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, and thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that it be in thee also. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you so much for all the mothers who are out here this morning. Lord God, we know that there's so many mothers who have been on their knees for years praying for their family members to come to Christ. Lord God, I've got a praying mama who prayed and pray, and Lord, I thank you for all these mothers who are out here to celebrate. Lord God, I just want to honor them as we honor you, Father. And Lord God, I would ask that you would put a special blessing upon their lives, Father. And Lord God, that you would touch this message in which you have given me to bring here this morning. That it would lift us up, Lord God, and to show us better how we should live for you on a daily basis. Father, I say thank you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. If you'd like to take notes, go ahead and you can write this down. First thing I want us to see about the text that we just read here this morning is that a mother's influence is memorable. Now, I want you to hear this. I want you to think about it. I want you to write that down. A mother's influence is is memorable. Now it says here in the Word of God, it says, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned or the sincere faith that is in you. So that's what Paul saying. He says, when I call to remembrance that sincere faith that I see in Timothy. Timothy was his protege. Timothy was his young student. Paul was his mentor. So Paul says, that sincere faith I see in you. Here we find Paul, who has been sentenced to death. Now, I want you to get this right. This is a little bit of a background here. He had been sentenced to death in a Roman prison, but he's calling to memory the faith in his young student, Timothy. So, wow. Here we have Paul uh, on his final missionary journey. He's, he's in a Roman prison. And he is looking at death. And he says, I'm, I'm about to be poured out as a drink offering. He's going to die. He knows he's going to die. He knows this is going to be the end. He, is in, he, he ends up being beheaded. So here he has all these things. Right? He has all these things that are on his conscience and on his mind at this time. And so many of us right now, just to kind of get off on a side note, so many of us have this virus and this corona and all the things that are going on that we're allowing to control our mind, but instead of allowing his ultimate death to control his mind, he's calling to memory the faith that he had in his young student. Now, I don't know about you, but many of us who should be discipling others, which is what we're supposed to do as Christians, if you find yourself in the hospital on death's doorstep, or you find yourself in the midst of a coronavirus with no job and you're, you're not sure how you're going to pay your bills, are you considering the faith of those in which you have been leading in the Lord Jesus Christ? That type 
of mentorship. That type of discipleship. That type of faith is what we need. Where we don't look at our own situations and circumstances, but we look at the job in which we're supposed to be doing for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. That is who we are supposed to be as Christians. Now I can only imagine that this memorable faith goes back to when Paul first met Timothy and the influence his mother had on his faith. Now look real, real quickly at Acts chapter 16, verse 1. Acts chapter 16, verse 1, it says this. It says, Then came him to Derby, or he to Derby and Lystra. And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess, and believed, but his father was a Greek. Here we see that it was Timothy's mother, not his father, that had the most influence on his faith. The Word of God says that she was a, a Jew or a Jewess, and a believer at the same time at that point, which meant that she would have taught him the Scriptures from an early age, and then she would have taught him of her conversion to the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see here that it was memorable to Paul that he was thinking about his young disciple Timothy and maybe the first time in which he met him there and how his mother, his mother was, was a Jewess and would have known the scriptures and raised Timothy up knowing the law, but then when she became a convert, when she learned of the Lord Jesus Christ, and she placed her trust and her belief on Jesus Christ for her eternal salvation, she taught him that as well. And so that is what comes to Paul's mind when he's there in prison getting ready to die, not on the situation in which he finds himself in, but hallelujah, on the one that he has been able to mentor over the years. In the Lord Jesus Christ. Timothy's faith that he learned from his mother was so memorable that it, it caused Paul to reflect on it even in his extreme situation. Now I would challenge all of you mothers here this morning to think about this. To never doubt nor take for granted the faithfulness that you can pass on to your children, because I want you to know this, it is a memorable one. The faith that you can pass on to your children, I don't want you to take that for granted, and I don't want you to doubt it. You can pass a memorable faith on to your children. A mother's influence is, is memorable. Now listen to me. Remember, you cannot give your faith to your children, but you can pass down what faithfulness in Christ looks like to your children. That's what Teresa was singing about. You cannot pass your faith down. You cannot save your children. Only the Lord Jesus Christ has the power to save. But you can pass down what faithfulness and faithful living in Christ looks like to your children. You have that ability. And that's what we're called to do. And that's what Paul said he saw in Timothy. He saw in young Timothy that he was raised by a godly mama. A Jewish who knew the scriptures and then was, became a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And taught that to her son. Now she couldn't save her son. But she could show her son what being saved looks like. And so can we. Next, write this down. A mother's influence is generational. A mother's influence is generational. Look again with me real quickly at chapter 1, verse 5b here. It says this, that which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice. Talking about that sincere faith. Right? Talking about the unfeigned faith which dwelt first in, in the grandmother Lois and then in the mother Eunice. A mother's influence is generational. Here we see that Paul makes a note. 
Here in Scripture, Paul makes note that Timothy's sincere faith was a generational one. It had been passed down from generation to generation. The character of faith, showing your child what faith looks like. Now we understand, as I said a moment ago, that faith in Christ cannot be inherited, but it can be diligently modeled from one generation to another. You have to model Christ to your children. You have to model Christ to those around you, to your grandchildren, to your nieces, to your nephews, whatever the case. You can't give them your faith, but you can model what true, sincere faith in Christ looks like, and that's exactly what it is that we're supposed to do. This reminds me of my own grandmother, Annie McKnight, who's gone on years ago to be with the Lord. My grandfather was a Southern Baptist minister for 40-some years. My grandmother was by his side that whole time. She was a faithful pastor's wife. I think about my grandmother Annie, and then I think about my mother Patsy. They could not give me their salvation, but they were able to model what sincere faith in Christ looked like. They were able to model that to me, from my grandmother down to my mother down to me. Does it mean that people won't stray? I strayed for years and years and years. But oh, praise God, I got the opportunity to see what Christian living looked like by the parents, by the mothers and grandmothers who modeled it before my eyes. I think about my how my mother-in-law modeled sincere faith to my wife. And I see how my wife models sincere faith to Christian and Samantha and Kara, our daughters. I watch how that generational faith starts to pass down. The modeling, diligently modeling what faith in Christ looks like. There again, you can't give them your salvation, but oh, hallelujah, you can show them what it looks like. You can show them what being saved looks like. Now listen to me real closely. Maybe your mother, maybe you're here this morning, and you're thinking your mother was not a believer. That's okay. The generational influence can start with you. I want you to listen to that. Maybe you're sitting here saying, well, I didn't have a, a mother who modeled Christianity or a grandmother who modeled Christianity before me. That's okay. The generational influence can start with you and with your son, with your daughter, with your grandson, with your granddaughter. It can all start right here, right now, with you being that generational influence. Lastly, write this down. A mother's influence is persuadable. A mother's influence is persuadable. Look with me again at the last part of verse 5. He says, I am persuaded that it is in you also. Talking about that sincere faith that was modeled from grandmother to daughter to son. He says, I am persuaded that that faith that we find in them... That model character is in you as well. Here we see that Paul was persuaded, or we can use the word convinced, that the same faith that he saw from the two women in Timothy's life was the same faith that he saw in his young protege, Timothy, as well. Wow. Wow, what a faith that is. When we can pass down model living and then that person gets saved and then all of a sudden they start living for the Lord not just not just getting saved but starts to to live out the the, the life of salvation in which we're supposed to and it persuades others and Paul sees it and he said I'm persuaded that not only did these two women model Christianity in front of this young man but hallelujah he got himself and now he's modeling it. 
He's living it out. Paul says he was persuaded we need to understand that it takes time to build this type of faith. In 2 Timothy 3.15 it states this, and that from a child you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. It takes time. The best way for a mother's influence to be persuadable is to start teaching your children early on about the scriptures and modeling that sincere faith. The younger the better. The younger the better. There again, maybe you're here this morning and you say, well I haven't always done that. You can start right now. You can start right now being that generational model of salvation to your children. They can all start with you modeling that sincere faith. Deuteronomy 6, 7 states this. You shall teach them diligently to your children, talking about the scriptures, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Oh my goodness. Anytime that we dedicate babies here at the church, I always read this verse. That you would surround your children with the scriptures. The only way to build memorable, generational, and persuadable faith is to make sure that we are covering our children with the Word of God diligently, hallelujah, and consistently. Can I get an amen? That is the only way. That is the only way. And that's the way we need to model. And to be that model Christian with our children is to be diligent about covering them consistently with the Scriptures. Consistently letting them see what modeled Christianity looks like. I'm not talking about perfection. Nobody's perfect. But when you model it and when you mess up, your kids see that you're willing to go to the Word of God and go to your knees and ask for forgiveness from God Almighty above. That's what it looks like. It's not about being perfect. It's about serving a perfect God. Many of you mothers have been doing this for years. right? I know many of you here, you've been modeling sincere faith for years. And some of you others are just getting started. And that blesses my heart too. Wherever you are in this process, whatever part of this process you're in, whether you've been doing it for 50 years or whether you're just now taking hold of the message of Christ and you're starting to live it out, wherever you're at in this process, I just want to say thank you for trying your best through the guidance of the Holy Ghost of God to be a God-honoring, influential mother. No matter where you're at in that process, if you have been doing this for 50 years, thank you. Thank you for the legacy that you have put forth. And if you're starting today, I thank God for you. And I can't wait to be part of this journey that you're able to sit your children. I see these young children. We've got so many babies and, and little ones here at Leonard's Fort Baptist Church. I love watching the parents get more and more sold out to the Lord Jesus Christ because hallelujah, I know that that's going to be nothing but great things for those children is to have good, God-honoring parents leading the way. Amen? As we close here this morning, I want you to think about a few things. If there is any mother, father, or anyone else here this morning, or even watching by social media, who would like to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. So I don't care if you're a, a mama, a daddy, or anybody else in here. The Bible says today is the day 
of salvation. You can start that generational influence right here, right now, by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. By modeling what the Word of God here tells us what a Christian should look like and what a Christian should live like. Believe on Christ today and trust in Him for your eternal security and you too can be saved. Maybe your heart is burdened this morning. Don't you listen to this. Maybe your heart is burning and has been burdened here this morning because you have not been the best Christian influence that God wants you to be. And I want you to think about that. Maybe that's you. Maybe your heart's pounding and you got that deep lump in your throat and you says, you know what, I, I've not been the best Christian influence that I should have been over the years. I've not modeled what I know to be true to the ones in my family or to the ones at my work or the ones who are around me on a daily basis. I've not been that good Christian model that I should have been. If so, if that's you here this morning, repent of your sins and ask God to make you a better influence in the lives of others starting today. Starting today. That's all it takes, Christian. I'm talking to the Christians here this morning who's feeling that, that burden in their heart that they've not done what they need to do. Repent. Repent of that sin of not being the model Christian that you should be. Not trying and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead God and direct your life the way that you should. Repent of that right now and start living the way that God would have you live where you would be a godly Christian influence upon those who are around you. That's the life that we're supposed to be living. That's the life that we're supposed to be giving. And that's the life that the Word of God would tell us that we're supposed to live out each and every day in front of those around us. Be that godly influence to your children. Be that godly influence to your co-workers. Repent of your sins and come back to Christ more fully today. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for allowing us to be here. Once again, I thank God for all the mamas that are here this morning. I thank God for my wife, and I thank God for my own mama, who I know was on her knees so many sleepless nights when I was running the road and acting a fool. And she prayed. She tried to, to model what a Christian looks like in front of me. She wasn't always perfect, but she tried to model that Christian life in front of me. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you so much for breaking me down the way you did and drawing me back into yourself. Hallelujah! And praise God! for your mercies and your grace and your long-suffering and your, your drawing power. Lord God, continue to use these mamas in a mighty way, the ones who are here this morning. Lord God, use them in their families to be that generational influence. Father, that their kids would come to know you as their Lord and Savior. That they too would continue on the journey of being a generational influence. Father, we love you. And Father, we praise you and we thank you once again for allowing each and every one of these people here this morning to come out and hear the message of Jesus Christ and what he wants to do in your lives. Father, we love you. We praise you. And it's in your name that I pray. And everyone said, Amen and Amen.